أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار صدق الله العلي العظيم I mentioned yesterday that there are two groups who does insult the Islamic Sharia and the Islamic law and they do injustice to them. One group is those few Muslims who deal with Sharia with the concept of the implementation of Islamic Sharia with their passions, with their sentiments, not with their reason, not with aql, but with their desire. And many of them, they really know nothing about Islamic Sharia. They know nothing but the penal code, the punishment, that Sharia came to chop off the arms, the legs, the heads of those who oppose their thinking, not those who oppose Islam, their type of thinking. So this group, you can see them every single day. You hear about them, unfortunately, and you hear about their achievements. Every day there is a new tragedy, and the tragedy is really spreading. No Muslim country today is immune from their evil. Take North Africa, take Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. You know, Tunisia today, they declared the state of emergency. In the month of Ramadan. Why state of emergency? You know why? There are no troops are invading Tunisia from outside. There are some backward Muslims, backward-minded Muslims, called ISIS inside Tunisia, who are wreaking havoc on that country. They completely damaged the economy. Today I was listening to the news, and they said within within few weeks, Tunisia lost $1 billion, because all the tourists, they ran away. 39 of them were massacred, were killed. So who's going to lose? When a country, small country like Tunisia, they lose one billion dollars in a few days, who's going to lose? The Muslims. Families who are dependent on the industry of tourism. Their children, their young ones, their women, their men. But they don't understand. Those takfiris, they came to destroy all Muslim countries without any exception and to declare the corrupt type of khilafa, khilafa that is based on womenizing. They captivate, they capture women, and then they don't marry them. They sleep with them because they say, this is Milkul Yameen. This is Milkul I own her. She's my slave. I have the right to sleep with her. Or sometimes they sell them, as they did in the last few days, in two markets, in Syria and Iraq. They bring women from Syria, they sell them in Iraq, and they take women from Iraq, they sell them in Syria. This is the type of Islam that we face today. Horrible, horrible, horrible type of Islam. And unfortunately, it is spreading. Spreading to North America, to some communities in this country, in America in Europe, in France, in England, in Germany, in other places. And this is what the enemies of Islam intend. They are celebrating. Sometimes you hear the fireworks, huh? part of this celebration. Celebrating our pain, our misery. Now I see many people and I read reports that many people are leaving Islam. They say, if this is Islam, I don't want to be a Muslim. This is shame on me and my history and my family. I don't want to be called Muslim. I don't want to be associated with this type of religion. On the other hand, 
there are other peoples who do injustice to Islamic Sharia and Islamic religion by scaling the American people, frightening them, telling them that the Muslims are coming to invade your land, take away your properties, your families, enslave you, and impose the rigid version of, version of Islam upon you. And we see these voices, we hear them. We hear them. We hear them in America, in Europe, in the magazines, in articles, in movies, by some politician, by some religious leaders, by media, bandit sometimes. It happens. It is happening and they frighten the people because they don't want Muslims to leave, to live in freedom and respect. While we know that this is not true, no single credible Muslim authority or Muslim leader in America says, I want to implement Islamic Sharia in this country. We know it doesn't happen. And God does not want me to implement Islamic Sharia in a country where 99% of them are non-Muslims. God does not say, take your Islam and you know, push it down the throat of people. لا إكراه في الدين لا إكراه في الدين No coercion when it comes to religion. We should not coerce people. Even your families, even your children, present Islam to them. Present Islam that makes sense. The civilized Islam. Islam which is based on rationality, not passions, not desires, not sentiments. Islam, the Islam of Rahma, Islam of forgiveness, Islam of a humanity that cares about the humanity, not just, not just the Muslims. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We sent you a mercy for mankind, all mankind. Islam of the Prophet and Islam of his household, Ahlul Bayt, alayhim of the So, what is the Islamic Sharia, my friends? Definitely we have Islamic Sharia, and I mentioned this, that Sharia has aims and goals. One of the aims of Sharia I mentioned last night is the preservation and the protection of human's life. Human's life, period. Not just Muslim's life, human's life. And this is embedded in our book. Chapter 5, in this verse, Surah Al-Ma'idah, in this book, Chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا After the murder of Abel by Cain, when Cain murdered his brother Abel, Allah said, from now on, any attack, any sort of assault on any human being, any human soul, without reason, is considered an attack against the entire humanity. So if you hear, this means that, if you hear that someone has been killed for no reason somewhere in a different continent, you have to be upset. That's an attack on you, yourself, and your family, and your religion. A murder of one single is considered the murder of the humanity. Allah says there is no price tag. There is a price tag for everything in this universe. You can put a price tag. Except the human soul has no price tag. It's invaluable. It's precious. If you kill someone, Allah says, and if you go and give him the entire dunya, it would not restore what he has lost and what his family has endured. If you give him the entire dunya as a compensation or restoration, it's not enough. It's not enough. Human soul is sacred in all religions. And if you try to save one, save a human soul from attack, from being killed or destroyed, 
You have saved the entire humanity. You get the credit on the day of judgment. God gives you the credit of saving not only one soul, but the entire humanity. So that was the first fundamental of Islamic Sharia, to preserve, to protect human soul. And I said, in order for us to protect our lives, Allah says there are certain rules you have to observe. Then it goes into the details. I mentioned some of them last night, if you remember. Many people ask, what's wrong with alcohol? Let's people a drink. There is a lot of wrong in alcohol. Maybe, maybe some, I had a cardiologist the other day here, and she said, only small amount of wine, only, not, not even a glass. I said to her, they say glass. She said, no, say it. It's not a glass. It's, it's one third of a glass. Would be okay. Cardiologist, they say, for your heart. Only that. But even this one, I would not tell people because people are not going to pour only one third of the glass. They would not do that. When you tell them wine is good, they are not going to be content and satisfied with only this much. They're going to drink. Can you tell your kids now, you can drink, you can drink Pepsi or cola, but this much. And they say, yes, sir, yeah, only this much. They wouldn't listen to you. So Allah says something that takes away your mind from you and endangers your health and your mind, stay away from it. Stay away from it. Why, uh, why drugs are forbidden in Islam? All sorts of drugs. Because they are intoxicants. Stay away from them. Do not hurt yourself. Don't hurt your heart, neither your kidney, nor your lung. And this is what I say to my friends. You are all my friends and brothers and sisters. Do not smoke. Those of you who smoke, do not smoke. I always say to my friends, I, me, I have zero tolerance for smoking. I can't accept it. Under any circumstances, don't tell me I've been smoking for 30 years and nothing happened to me. It will happen. So, protect yourself. Allah has given you this body. Take care of it. For those who don't do exercise, you have to go. You have to have exercise. Wait. Until the month of Ramadan, go back to your exercise. For those who do not respect dietary rules, maintain a good diet. Don't be overweight. There is no excuse for you to be overweight. Sometimes people are overweight in other countries where there is no health education. So you may say, well, there is no health education. In America, we do have health education. We know what is right for us and what is wrong. We know it very well. Very well. There is no excuse. Don't be overweight. Allah says in this book, no overweight. Allah says no overweight. Eat according to what you need. Let me ask you this. If your car is full, full with gas, the, 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 the tank is full with gas, would you go again to the gas station and try to fill it again? Where does the gas go? Nowhere. It will overflow. The same thing with your stomach. Sometimes the stomach is full, so do not punish your stomach. Don't hurt your soul. We, the Muslims, we have to be number one. When it comes to health, we have to be number, number one. Physical health, mental health, ethical health. We have to be healthy. Our homes, the food that we eat, I will speak one day, inshallah, because many people ask me, why should we eat only the slaughtered meat according to the Islamic rules? Why not any other meat? Some people say, well, other meat, it's a clean, it's good, it's cheaper. Yeah, but then it is cheaper, but when you put it here, it has a spiritual ramifications. It will negatively affect you. When the food is not the biha, is not slaughtered Islamically. And I will speak about that, inshallah, maybe after the nights of God. So this is what Islam says, hygiene. It's important that we clean ourselves every single day. 
Here, every male, female, adult, elderly, they have to have a shower at least once a day. There is no excuse that you don't take a shower. You are not in Africa, nor in India, nor in Iraq, nor in Arab countries or the Middle East, or you are here next to the ocean, one of the biggest oceans, and you have showers, alhamdulillah, and you have soaps, and you have shampoos, go to the supermarket and see how many types. Sometimes I go to some countries, there is no soap, no shampoo. But in America, we have no excuse. Clean yourself, teach your children to shower every single day, every single day. Why do we have wudu? Can't we just stand and pray without wudu? Allah says, wudu, I want to bring to your attention that you have to clean yourself. You have to use the water that I have given you. Use it wisely. Clean yourself. Use atr, perfume. You know, especially in the month of Ramadan. One of the things that are very mustahab and very, very, very recommended for all members of the family is to wear perfume. Use some of your money that you save, some of the money that you spend on food, cut, cut back on food, spend on perfume. Don't leave your house, even when you are in, in your house, even when you are with your wife, with your husband, with your children. Wear perfume. And nawafatul iman. It's part of faith. It's part of worshiping God. It's to be clean, to be presentable. Then we go to the second aim. So the first aim of Sharia is the preservation and the protection and the defense of a human life. Human life is sacred. And do everything possible to protect it against murder, against terrorist act, against destruction, against ailments, sickness. You have to do everything possible. Second, we come to the second goal of Sharia. And I wish the American people, they understand, before they attack the Islamic Sharia, they understand, they open a book. Usually those who attack the Sharia, either they are completely ignorant, they have no clue. Sometimes I go to some universities, they ask me a question. They ask me a question. You know what is the question? Believe me. In universities, they tell me, Imam, what's the... Not, not Iman, Iman. Iman, of course, not Iman. Iman, what's the difference between Islams and Muslims? Wow, that's a difficult question. Islams and Muslims. What do you answer? This is at a university level, huh? University. Kids are studying at the university. Sometimes it's a law school. So, so either some people, some of them, they have no clue about Islam completely ignorant or they know very well they study but they are bigots Tasso. they have a prejudice they have a prejudice against Islam you know what happened three weeks ago in Charleston a Christian who goes to a church a white supremacist who goes to a church he kills nine people in a church in a Bible study session in a black church, but people are reluctant to call it a terrorist act. They don't call it a terrorist act. But if someone, a foolish, a foolish Muslim, goes and kills someone or does something, oh, this is Islamic extremism, Islamic terrorism. How about others when they murder and call it love? In a church, People studying the Bible just because they are black, they don't belong to this country. The black were the people who built America. Go and read the history of it. Who built these buildings, the roads, the infrastructure of this country? The black people. They were enslaved, they were brought by ships to American shores, they were sold here, they worked like animals, worse than animals, in subhuman conditions. They were tortured and they built this country and now they have no rights to worship. They have no rights to worship. More than 10 churches were burnt last, the last two weeks in this country, in the United States of America. This is American democracy. Let them fix this country first. The second aim of Islamic Sharia 
is the promotion and the protection of what? After life, what is more important? The second more important after nafs and life. What is it? Money? Food? What is it? Buildings? Huh? After life, I'm asking you, after nafs, life, what is the second item on the table which is more important and more sacred? After nafs, here in your body, you have something here, after the heart, the nafs, the soul, which is more, which is second in importance. Aql. Reason. And aql. Imagine if someone has the biggest body, very fit, but he does not have aql. According to me, this is my own vocabulary. He's aqlless. <laughs> Brainless. He's aqlless. What is the value of this person? He's like what? He's like animals. And Allah says in the Quran, this is in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا هذا لزمك أكاديمك لزمك